also mentioned, I am CEO of Burnt No Call and COO of Cruiser Tees Art. And I'm very fortunate that in both of these companies, we get to take on issues like social justice. Whereas in stark contrast, most companies cannot because they're a corporation or they're a small business and are sometimes afraid to take a stand. And we understand that. But we follow social entrepreneurship here. So what does that mean? We are a creative firm that produces thoughtful design integrating contemporary art. I am proud of the causes and organizations that Burt Nopal has supported and continues to support, such as Eva's Heroes, Planned Parenthood, Raices, Sueños Fronteras, and Any Baby Can, just to name a few. Nonprofits actually make up the majority of our business. It is 60 to 70 percent of our clientele, which is a little <laughs> unheard of. And to be honest, Cruz and I didn't realize that it was unheard of until Leadership San Antonio 43 or 42 came through. We were doing a demonstration like we did for y'all, and um, you know, just came up in conversation, and their faces were just visibly exuberant that we had that much of a nonprofit clientele. Um, so then we thought, well, we must have something here. In addition to our nonprofit clientele, we also always have a nonprofit um, in kind donation. And, it, and with our in kind donation, we also have nonprofit pricing. So if a corporation comes to us, and we've dealt with national corporations, they have their own pricing, and nonprofit has their own special pricing. And why do we do that? We do that because we think it's fair for everyone to have good design and have access to good design. Our, our design aesthetic is influenced by contemporary art, as you can see here. So we have things like suboto a subos. Politics are always important to us and just getting out the vote. Chale um, con ice, and that's an informational poster. If ice happens to show up at your work, what do you do, or in the car? Muhead Power, that was a big campaign that we had um, that really took off. I think we started it with Planned Parenthood and then in the Me Too, no, it wasn't the Me Too, it was the Women's March. We saw it all over nationwide, which was really cool to see. Um, Julian for US President 2020, we are proud to support him. We've also supported other political candidates such as Gina Ortiz Jones, um, Becca when he was running for Texas. Uh, Texas Senate, or <clears throat> who else? Um, Justin Nelson, to name a few. We've, we've done it quite a lot. We found ourselves in a nice political niche, and it's fun to um, to be involved on that level. Of course, Hey Raza Vote Hillary, and actually in Cruiser Tees Art, that company, um, he was the, La the Latino Coalition artist, which is a huge honor. Um, and I wanted to be at the inauguration. <laughs> I thought we were gonna be there. Um, Cynthia Trump, of course. Uh, keep families with us, that's a huge one that's so important to us right now, immigration reform. And we are focusing on that more than ever. So just take a look. Oh, my favorite down here is the Mujeres Justias. So we have our Supreme Court justices, and we used to have that on a shirt, but that's one of my favorite ones. All right. Um, you might be asking yourself, well, how did y'all get here? Well, I mentioned in my former life, or Melissa mentioned in my former life, that I was an educator. I started at Southwest Independent School District, which I loved. It was a great community, um, but it was a Title I school. But they had access to a lot of things. I think because of their partnership with Toyota, so they had the best of the best of, in technology. Um, and they had money for programming, for after school activities, not just sports, but clubs and organizations, um, and just different opportunities that I hadn't seen. Then I ended my career at Lee High School in NEISD, and that was a complete difference. Both, at Lee High School is also a Title I school, but they didn't have the access that Southwest did. They didn't have the partnership or the funding. So for me, 
I think that's when I was really taken aback. That was the first time I realized um, that people don't have the same opportunities. At one point, they wanted to do a paperless classroom, which means you know, you're know you not passing out papers, you're not taking tests on papers. And I remember fighting with my administration and saying, my kids don't have internet. Sometimes they didn't even have electricity. They were running you know, um, extension cords to their neighbor's house. So things like that, I think, is really where I started to get um, just a little bit more aware, I would say. Inter Cruz Ortiz, uh, we did meet at Lee High School. Um, he was the art teacher, not my type at all. <laughs> um, took a little bit for us to get there, but as we started talking, I realized we had so much in common, especially on these issues. Um, so, yeah, we started dating, and then Absolute Vodka came to him, and they wanted a Texas look. He was chosen by a global team, and the reason they chose him is because he does, they said he does good. Like, his art is always for the people, um, and engaging, and never negative. Um, so that got me thinking. We're both teachers, I think it was 2012 about? Yeah, 2012-2013. I thought, if this company is coming to us from Sweden, wouldn't other companies come to us for the same thing? They were coming to us because they wanted a, an in in the Latinx market. So. I talked to Cruz about it. He's like, I don't know, the benefits. Um, and it was a risk. We did it. I jumped first. I organized the LLC, the franchise tax, all the boring stuff of business. Um, and he came on the next year. And so we have been, we started Snake Hawk Press, I would say, in 2015, summer of 2015. So this has not been a long time at all. It's been four years. We are very fortunate to have worked with so many great companies. Um, <clears throat> hold on. Oh, I also wanted to talk about his, how his art does speak to Texans, especially that market that we're trying to engage more with. My family background growing up, though, was business. So it was less scary for me. I have a little one that's waiting on me for that. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't as scary for me. I I grew up in the family business. I knew what it entailed. We would be working all the time. There are no real breaks. Um, but I liked it. I'm kind of. I think we both are workaholics. So for us, social justice just was natural in the company. In addition to it being natural, with Absolute, we met a man named Ofdel. If you look up Good is the New Cool right now, he started a social movement for businesses. Good is the New Cool. So what he did was created a program for companies to have social responsibility. He's traveled all over the world and taught his program, but we've taken major points and applied it to our business. I don't think if we hadn't had that networking connection with him that we would be as organized as we are with social, with social justice or social campaign. Um, or even just applying a nonprofit pricing, right? Most people just get the same pricing across the board. So little things like that. What I like about Good is the New Cool is that it's gotten such recognition that major corporations are doing it. Patagonia is a Good is the New Cool company. Um, so from small to huge, it's making a difference. <clears throat> so we have learned so much in the past seven years to apply to apply this at this level is exciting and amazing, and we're just looking forward to the next 10 years and what that's gonna look like. Do I have any questions about 
the justice aspect or any questions, period? Yes. You. <laughs> yes. Do you think having the lower prices for nonprofits brings you more traffic and more clients? I'm not sure. I think about that often. I don't know if a lot of companies know, a lot of nonprofits know. I think if I'm talking about it, then yes, they're they're aware. But I think initially when they first approach us, they're sometimes surprised when I say, oh, okay, we're also going to give you an in-kind donation. They say, oh, wow, okay, thank you. Um, and sometimes nonprofits are a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little scared of of the full proposal, and they're like, oh my gosh, and I said, no, no, no. This is your nonprofit pricing, and we also give an in-kind donation. And they're like, oh, okay. And so that helps a lot. So thank you for your question. Anybody else? Yes. Texas, so you'll see like here's kind of, it's a background, but it's an agave look, even on this one. Um, so that ties into Texas, the, the mix of what we call it code switching with English and Spanish, I think that's very Texas. Um, just like researching our client and seeing what they've done in the past, what their vision is, what they want, and then applying it to to our vision of Nuevo Texas. We call it Nuevo Texas, New Texas. So, does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Do you feel like all your work with the nonprofits helps attract like corporations that you want to work with, like they self-filter out, or do you have people, corporations come to you who are like, mm, not so fast? I haven't had that yet. We did have Papa John's, that was our client before everything kind of blew up. Um, and we we were surprised. And our client was the local franchiser that has South South Texas. And he's a great guy and gives his time and um, is always donating. He shows up at public pools during the summer with a car full of pizzas for the kids. So for us, that was kind of hurtful, you know, for, it, Unfortunately for him, it was the big guy, right? But it still affected him. Um, so we've been on the back end of it. We haven't yet been on the front end. But we always research our clients, too. I think if you're coming to us, you probably align, right? Like, I don't think, um, who's a company that we? I mean, like, because you're so public with your nonprofit work, does that help them filter out so they know they would align? I think so, yes. I absolutely think so. I think they're always, I, I think even clients research who they want and why. So, anybody else? Yes? Any thoughts on what's next? In the next 10 years, I'd like to see Burt Nopal a second generation company. I'd like to pass it down to my children. Um, you know, and just create a, a, a legacy. I realize that's kind of difficult. It doesn't usually um, succeed past third generation of family businesses, but you know, that's my goal. And I'd like to expand it even even larger, a national, a national scale. And then for Cruiser T's art, I'd like to see him in art history books. So I'm always pushing that, his career further. Anybody else? Yes. Do you have any upcoming like movements that you're going to be creating and working for? Like an initiative that we're going to be on? Yeah. So actually, we're going to start a campaign for Census 2020. It's really important that um, that we're documented. And I know right now with immigration, um, people are scared to fill that out. But that impacts our communities directly. If we're not filling it out, then our services are cut. So that's our next big one. Um, 
Julian Castro. We're supposed to come out with a phase two for design there. We're really excited about that. We also have other political candidates this this upcoming term for 2020. Um, immigration I, is always, until it goes away, it's going to be front and center for us. Um, and, you know, things just kind of, as things come up, unfortunately, in this Trump era, every day there's something else. And our motto is, if we can touch it, we're going to do it. If it's in our area, in our grasp, then we're going to be a part of it because we think it's important to draw attention to these issues. And if other companies can't because, you know, we all have corporate roles, right? Um, and if other companies can't, then we need to. Anybody else? Thank you all so much for your time. If you have any questions for me privately, I'm happy to answer. 